Hi, a very good afternoon to all the students. And how is everyone? So basically, I can see uh, many of you have already joined. Uh, we have 24 of you have already joined. Uh, I think seven or eight of you have, are still on the way. Yeah, so I can see. Uh, so let me wish everyone good afternoon. So uh, I can see Tiong Le. Hi, Yao Ting. Hi. Uh, good afternoon. Chong Yi, good afternoon. I can see Tiong Le, the first one to join. Eh? So after that, uh, yeah. So good afternoon, everyone. Let me see who is here. We have Pun Kiong. Eh? So Pun Kiong name is always on top. And we have Chai Siu and Chun Wei and Chong Yi, Han Xiang, uh, Hang Dong, Xin Shen, Jing Wen, Sui Min, Ka Xing, uh, and also Ken Xing, uh, Brenda, uh, Brenda Hui, and Meilin, Jiang Le, uh, Wei Hong, Wen Yang, Wen Liang, Xu Pian, Xie Wen, Yao Ting, uh, Yi Hang, and uh, Yi Si, and Yu Yang, and Zerlim, and Jiang Hen. Okay, so good afternoon to every one of you. So uh, I hope everyone uh, 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 already uh, have a good rest just now uh, before you join my class. So basically, uh, for today, we spend, spend a little bit time to discuss about the virtual memory uh, before we will go to do some revision. Uh, the revision, we will try to look at the past questions. I uh, will also give you some of the questions to try out. Yeah, so uh, our midterm is still on next Tuesday, is it correct? Or you need to, uh, are you okay with next Tuesday test, midterm test? Is that okay for you? Yeah. Everyone, are, are you okay? Next Tuesday, this time? Because this uh, fix, uh, we fix week nine, Tuesday, uh, two to four, right? If okay, then we will just continue, yeah? If uh, not okay, then you let me know, yeah? Yeah. So, uh, any, any comment? Oh, everyone okay, yeah? Can do, yeah? Okay, sure. Okay, now, uh, let's discuss about the uh, virtual memory. So for your information, we have uh, almost, we have still uh, three chapters, uh, but all of these are uh, related to theory. So uh, nothing much about the calculations. So basically you just listen to all those theories. You want to know the concept of all this uh, virtual memory? Uh, so what is a um, virtual memory? Uh, let us uh, look at this virtual memory. Now we will not spend a lot of time, so maybe just less than half an hour. Yeah, the virtual memory is, uh, is a memory. Yeah, but it's not a memory also because it's virtual. Uh, why do we call it virtual memory? Uh, there are some reasons. Because if you are using a 16-bit computers, for example, last time, last time you have a 16-bit computer. Uh, okay. 16-bit computer. So the maximum address or mean memory that you can actually have is 2 to the power of 16. Okay, 16 is 2, 2, uh, 2 multiply uh, 2 to the power of 664K. Eh? Okay, 64 kilobytes. Okay, kilobytes. Two to the power six, right? Yeah. Okay. So if let's say uh, last time when you have a 16-bit computer, uh, the maximum memory that you can have is maximum RAM you can have is this uh, 64 kilobyte. This is the memory that you can have to run your program. Because RAM is required to run your program. Uh okay, so you can you can buy up to 64 kilobyte RAM last time. Uh, but after that, they move to the 32 bit. When you have 32 bit, a lot more uh, addressing modes, uh, uh, addressing power. So you have 2 to the power 32. But this one is roughly equals to 4 gigabyte. Yeah. So this is the maximum you can get. Uh, giga, right? Giga, mega, giga. Yeah. 
So this is the RAM that I have at my computer right now. Four gigabyte. And then they have a 64 bit computer, like uh, my computer also. Uh, right now, everyone is using the 64 bit. Uh, if you are using a new computer, then definitely it's a 64 bit. It's already been here for a very long time. So it's two to the power of 64. Yeah, it's very a lot. Uh. Uh, for us, it's almost unlimited. Uh. Uh, unlimited. Uh, at this moment, it's unlimited RAM that you can put into your computer. But uh, also, depends on the design of your processor. You have that uh, address. You can address uh, to these uh, addresses. But the spec does not allow you to do so. They have a maximum uh, for your processor. So the problem is, even though you can support up to 264, but your computer hardware uh, does not support it all because the RAM is very expensive. Okay, RAM is very, very expensive. Uh, so people cannot afford to buy. So what they can do is they want to run a program. They have a lot of programs which cannot be fit into a four gigabyte. Yeah, it's too big for four gigabyte to log in. They have a lot of program like they are playing some games. Yeah, they don't have the enough memory uh, to play the game on the spot. So what they do is they have the virtual memory. Virtual memory extend the RAM to hard disk. Okay, extend RAM to hard disk so that the RAM can actually uh, extend to hard disk. That hard disk become a RAM, but of course it's a low version RAM. So this is called the uh, virtual memory. Uh, virtual memory usually is handled by operating system. So a computer usually just help uh, your your processor just help to let you to have this function of virtual memory. But uh, the one who handle virtual memory is actually your Windows and other operating systems. So given the give the program that uh, the impression that it has a contiguous working memory, because if you want to run a program, it must be inside the RAM. Only the program inside the RAM can be run. Any program in the hard disk cannot run. The computer is not able to run a program uh, in your hard disk. They can only run at the RAM or copy in the cache or uh, yeah, but they cannot run. The computer cannot run uh, at the hard disk or CD-ROM. They have to copy to the RAM first. So, Although it may uh, actually physically fragmented or even on a secondary storage. So this is about the uh, virtual memory on the hard disk. So usually it's hard disk. So cache for the mean memory. Uh, this one only see uh, yeah, just a hard disk. So major motivations, uh, it allow the safe sharing of the memory among the programs. Yeah and then remove the burden of a small limited amount of mean memory. As we know, the RAM is very, very expensive. Uh, for example, you want to add some RAM to your laptop, it will cost you a few hundred ringgit, you have to double your RAM. So some people think, I will just buy a cheap one, that will just use a virtual memory. Of course, it will be slower. Yeah. And then allow a non contiguous memory block to be addressed with this at and if it, is, it was contiguous, contiguous means continuous. Uh. Yeah, the meaning is continuous, contiguous, uh, con connected. Uh. Yeah, let's say this uh, connected, contiguous. Yeah, conti uh, contiguous. So the, this one is a RAM. So after that, we go into the hard disk. Yeah, hard disk and then hard disk. In this case, uh, we have originally 4K. So here we have a lot, uh, maybe you can put another 12 gigabyte, another 12 gigabyte. Yeah, so this is how it works. So it makes your RAM looks a lot, uh, but you cannot buy two, two less RAM because the RAM is still the fastest. Hard disk is very slow. But if let's say uh, you want to run a program, you don't have enough RAM, so slow is better than cannot run, right? So that's why that we still prefer this virtual memory. So virtual memory divides the mean memory into uh, blocks and allocate them to the different processes. 
so which has its own address space. So that's why we need a protection scheme that will restrict the process to belonging only to this process. Once the hard disk, let's say this is a hard disk, is divided into a virtual memory here, and this is a other parts for your data. So virtual memory part cannot be accessed by any of your program, other programs, except operating system and the program that is uh, currently run by the operating system. So with the virtual memory, not all codes are data as needed to be in the RAM. Yeah. So you can put it at the virtual memory, then it can start over there. So mem virtual memory actually provide process relocation. So they will just switch it uh, switch, uh, from the hard disk to the RAM, etc. So there will be a virtual address uh, given by the CPU and also physical address for having an access to the main memory. So there is a address translation that you, you need to translate from the virtual address to the physical address and etc. So this is basically the diagram of the virtual memory to the uh, physical mem uh, addresses. So this one is your RAM and this is your hard disk. So as you can see, yeah, the this is the virtual addresses. Uh, oh, sorry, yeah, this is hard disk. This is hard disk plus RAM. Uh, yeah. So the virtual addresses actually uh, contains some of the physical RAM addresses plus some the hard disk addresses. So virtual memory, virtual uh, memory block, we call it fish. When we deal with uh, virtual memory, there is a new term. Uh, we don't call it block anymore. We call it a page. Yeah. Last time when we used Windows 95, huh? okay, or Windows, any Windows, uh, right now Windows 10 seldom see lah, Windows 95. There's something called blue screen. What is this blue screen? When blue screen comes out, huh? they will give you a message, page. Four, right? If you are ever uh, experienced the Windows 95, Windows uh, ME times, so you will seldom, you will uh, usually see this blue screen. The blue screen has the page four. That means page four means virtual memory malfunction cannot work. So it come up with a blue screen. They say to protect themselves, uh, protect the Windows. Yeah. So virtual memory, uh, every block, we call it a pitch. Okay, that's why pitch fault means virtual memory got a fault there. So as, uh, actually my computer, every, all the computers uh, that you are now using, usually we'll use virtual memory because four gigabyte of the RAM is not enough. You have so many programs. Uh, sometimes you're running my lab at the background while listening to my uh, lectures. Some you are doing other things, uh, or some you are looking at the PowerPoints. Yeah, so it's very, very, uh, you have a lot of programs. Now today people, a lot of things that they know, uh, yeah, especially the computer programs, they run the Word document, uh, they can do the note on the computer, they can, and then the computer itself also run the antivirus sometimes. Yeah, so uh, this is what, uh, why we need the virtual memory. So you can see the virtual memory basically is a very large memory. Uh, we have a swap file in the secondary storage. So this part, we call it a swap file. The swap file is the part of the hard disk that have the virtual memory. And then it is usually store rarely used pages. When we talk about pages, we don't talk about block. Then we are talking about uh, virtual memory at the hard disk. But if we talk about block, we are talking about cache and RAM. Yeah. So this is the virtual addresses. Okay. So we have a page number here. Then we have a page offset. Yeah. So these are the two parts of a virtual memory. We have how many pages you can have. But physically, you don't have so many pages. 
you only have uh, so many pitch in the RAM. So how many bits are there? One, uh, until this is uh, 17, eh, sorry, 17 plus one of 18, two to the power 18, right? 18 pitch, okay? So you have uh, so many pages. But here, we have a 31 to 12 is 1920, right? 1920 pages. To the power of 20 pages. So uh, other, all the other pages are actually stored in the hard disk. So there must be a translation uh, from the RAM address to the hard disk address. So that's why we have this translation physical address and also virtual address. Your virtual address is actually translated to the physical address by the combinations of hardware and the software. So processor will in charge to give you some function, but operating system will do the most things. So since each uh, memory uh, address, let me erase everything. Up. Since each uh, memory address uh, request first, Uh, first, uh, request first require an address translation. Because you don't translate, that you know which memory you want. Uh, okay, your program, let's say uh, your program know that we have a uh, 100 gigabyte of RAM. Okay, let's say your computer have 100 gigabyte of mean memory. Uh, it's amazing, right? But uh, most of them are virtual memory. So, in fact, you only have four gigabyte of the RAM. So you don't have such, uh, so many main memory. You can only have four gigabyte of RAM. So I will translate to this four gigabyte of RAM. So a virtual memory miss, we call it a page fault. When the page is not in the physical memory, page is not in the RAM. So we have the page fault, okay? Now just now I talk about the blue screen page fault and I could not handle it. Uh, because uh, hard disk got some back setter or whatever. Uh, there are many reasons for that, or uh, the computer is already got support. Uh, yeah, there are many possibility. So this is actually the address translation mechanism. We have virtual pitch here, yeah, and also the offset. The offset is actually how many bits in a picture. Uh, for example, here we have a 12 bits, right? Two to the power of 12 is four, equals a, equivalent to four kilobytes. Huh? Uh, kilobyte, yeah. So uh, let's say you have four kilobytes here. So how many pitch that you have uh, compared to the virtual pitch? So that's why uh, the virtual pitch, some of them exist in main memory, some of them uh, link to the hard disk. So this is basically your, yeah, your pitch table. Uh, there is a table to tell you that which page actually in the memory and that it is, and then which page actually uh, exists in a disk or hard disk. So this page will tell you if the, the, the ticker here is one. Huh? So means that it is in the mean memory. If let's say zero, yeah, so you go to the hard disk. So it exists here. So we go uh, have the one here. So this is a pitch table. So in the uh, computer, there is such a pitch table handled by your operating system. Yeah. So you can see that the pitch table, uh, pitch, uh, virtual pitch number here, okay, is actually, uh, what is the physical address? We go to here. If the uh, physical pitch base address zero, uh, this will be zero, so it go to the hard disk. Uh, and then uh, this is actually the physical page number. Okay, physical page number. Yeah, and the offset, go to the offset. And then uh, uh, this one, the physical page, go to the RAM. Yeah, so this is, uh, that's all. So if let's say it's not in the main memory, uh, what we will have to do, so later we will see. Uh, so it takes an extra memory access to translate virtual address to the physical address for your virtual memory. That's why uh, if let's say you have a lot of RAM, you try not to use the virtual memory, but 
uh, if with uh, Windows, such a big operating system, it's very, very unlikely that you can, you can lift up this uh, virtual memory. So in Windows, you will always have virtual memory because the program is so big until, uh, even though you buy a lot of RAM, so it still will not be enough. Yeah, so it will not be enough. Yes, so that's why they will still have to have the virtual memory. So virtual address, addressing with a cache. So let's say a cache. So the translation, we will have to go through cache and mean memory as well. Yeah, so because the copy of the, uh, the mean memory is also at the cache. So I also have to map, uh, map to those uh, cache as well. So physical address go to cache only, then will go to mean memory. Yeah, et cetera. So this makes the memory, the cache accesses very, very expensive. Yeah, if every access was really two addresses, so it will take a long time. So how many things is to use the translation load uh, site buffer? Uh, so there will be a special hardware called translation load a site buffer, a small cache to keep track of recently used address mapping. So there's a recently used address mapping what you're having do a page table lookup. So every time you access to something, you have to do the page lookup. You have to search the tables and see where is it. The so virtual memory will make your computer run a lot slower. Yeah, a lot slower. So don't use it so often. Eh? Yeah. So this is the uh, making the address translation fast. So you have the, uh, so how do you make? Okay, so you have the, Translation load aside uh, table. Yeah, this one, uh, translation load aside uh, buffer, buffer. Okay, buffer here. So, translation load aside buffer. We have a tag here. So, the tag here will also tell you where the uh, block is, uh, uh, pitch is, uh, the block and the pitch is. So, we have the translation load aside buffer, TLB. And this one will link to the physical page address uh, to here. So instead of looking into this page table, which is very big, okay, it's a very big table, a uh, big dictionary. Yeah? So this is a small table. Yeah, small table definitely will require less time to seek for the data, right? Let's say this is just a very small table, so uh, so very fast you will take, uh, we get it. Uh, so that's why you have this uh, translation load aside buffer to, to actually give you a faster access to the physical address of the virtual memory. So this is the virtual addressing with the load ahead buffer. Besides, we have the, have the load aside buffer. We also have a load ahead buffer. Yeah, so uh, load ahead buffer, uh, we also have this one, yeah. So basically, you need to know the look ahead and look aside uh, tables for today. Yeah. So uh, because now it's already two thirty. Yeah. So we are we are at the page number eight. Yeah. So we are not going to finish uh, these lectures because I want to focus to the your revisions because you are going to take your data test. If let's say you do not check, then we have it next Tuesday. Uh, the same time, two to four, so we have to do some uh, revision first. Okay, so this one uh, later, la, we will uh, do this look ahead buffer, even though it's uh, quite interesting, like right, the virtual memory, but we will have to stop here. So we will go to, uh, uh, let me show you how to get your cluster paper. Uh, last time was not taught by me, but uh, it was taught by Ms. Jung Shilan, but still we can look at uh, his, uh, her, Question pay questions, so we can try to do some of her uh, questions if it's, uh, it's useful. So where do you get the uh, question papers? I believe uh, uh, most of you have already very familiar with the, our TAR UC searching, uh, researching system. So you can go to the TAR UC website and go and click the library. Yeah, this library, we have a lot of information, including all the past papers. So library will show you uh, all these things. So you will have a 
search box over here. So click this. How you see is to institutional repository. Repository, uh, repository. Uh, how you see institutional repository. Okay, so we search our code. BTEE 3213. And we try to find some questions uh, which we can actually, uh, why, why is not secure? Previously, it was secure. Yeah, never mind, I just go, uh, I think how you see it's not going to steal my information, right? So, yeah. So, Tunggu Abdurrahman Yusti, PTEE 3013. There are many papers here uh, from the 2017 until uh, uh, now. So, these are the, all the papers that we have. So, let's go and see the last paper. Make this one. So this is the latest paper I, I try to open. Huh? Yeah, so we try to see and then you have to log in definitely. Which one? Okay. So log in and then later I will, uh, we will select a question. Then I will ask you, I'll give you some time to do that. I will also give you some question. Uh, we, we, we will do some revision. Huh? So we say, yeah, the last paper that we have, huh? the previous is the October, October and then. Uh, four months, five months ago, five months ago, yeah. So we go and open. Uh, let me see. Uh, usually it's the first or second question is, uh, we use first and second questions uh, because we need half right for now, but later during the end of the sem, when we have, the, we have more time, then we can uh, do all the questions. Uh, one by one, I would like you to try. So this uh, 5th of October. Let's see what question. Uh. Yeah. Ram, uh, we, we are not testing the question. Yeah, this question. Do you want to do this? Yeah, the, the first one is about the performance. State the answer law. Yeah, right. Let's try to do this question. Uh, before that, let me post this one first. Uh, computer P. So yeah, I'm using a as I, you know I'm using a, a Intel Celeron N four thousand. Yeah. So the speed is a bit uh, slow, but uh, is it never hang la, Yeah. You never feel me la, Yeah. I don't know why it's slow la, but it, it's, it will not hang right. Seldom la, Maybe once or twice I haven't. Yeah. Very seldom hang. But sometimes it will, it, will, it will stop there for a while. So I open the jampot. Yeah, let's do the jampot. Yeah, so I will let everyone to assess this. I've seen 29 of you have already joined. Hopefully everyone will join at the end. Okay, you can actually answer this question. Uh, on the jumper, I will give you like uh, state the M star laws. Uh, this one I think you can do. Uh, please help to, to answer this question at the uh, jumper here. Let's answer this. I give you like five minutes. Uh, anyone knows the answer, you can cut and paste or put it at the jumper here. So later when you do your revision, then you know how to do it. Yeah. So please. Uh, for your information, your midterm test will have the uh, will have programming. Uh. Yeah, you need to do the Intel assembly language also. Yeah, let's uh, yeah, let's do this uh, state M star law. So I will see I, uh, how I cut and paste there. Okay, I cut and paste here. the Amstar law. Uh, Amstar law is very important uh, in our uh, computer architecture. So I want you to actually try out this one. This is the Amstar law in uh, five minutes. Uh, anyone knows can write your answer. Let me continue to finish the first question. Let's spend five minutes on this.
uh, cloud computer performance, right? And firewall say that. Uh, I think a lot of you remember that. That means the speed up of that particular improvement can we apply to the portion that you set, you set improvement, right? You set uh, functions, right? Yeah, but how to put in words, huh? so you have to refer to the retinas. And this have to answer. Uh, today you will be doing exercise uh, uh, revision. Eh? So we try to do as many as possible, and then Friday also same. We do. Uh, don't be shy, huh? you can just uh, write on the chat box. Okay, and start off. You can use a text box as well. If you want, you can use a text box and copy. Uh, please, please join yeah, at the chat on the chat box there there is a link the gem file so please take the gem file uh gem box there and then have to write the answer Yeah, Chongyi, please write, yeah? Don't be shy, yeah? Tip and star slow, yeah. And Salon is a formula used to predict the performance improvement on particular modification made. Yeah, correct. So what and Salon say? Uh, a little bit further explanation. You have the formula, whatever. Okay, yeah, very good. So maybe you can put in the formula as well. Uh, let's make that any formula. So this one. Yeah, correct. Yeah, okay, very good. Yeah, correct. Very good. So let's give a big round of applause to Chung Yi. Eh? So very good. Okay. Thank you for answering this. Yeah. And Salon is a formula which used to predict the performance improve, improve on particular uh, modifications made. And Salon speed up is the ratio of speed up equals to performance of the entire task using enhancement uh, when possible. Uh, performance divided by performance for entire task speed up using the enhancement. So alternatively, speed up is the executive time for entire task speed up using the enhancement 
divided by execution time for entire task using enhancement when possible. So this is the MSL law. Yeah, so it's the MSL law. So now you have you are going to use the MSL law from here and then calculate the speed up uh, for this question. Very good. Let's give it a part to me. Okay, good. Yeah, so we go to the next page with the B. So please the question over here. So let's do the B. If a program spends 75% of the time doing multiply, okay, now 75% uh, is a very maybe image processing or video processing or network processing, and the multiplier is speed up by three times. How fast, how much faster can the application run? Yeah, use the MSTAR law that you have already defined here what is the speed up ah, performance here over or execution time over here. So let's uh, study and calculate this one and give me the answer. I'll give you like uh, 10 weeks to do this. Yeah. Uh, you can now start to take out your lectures and then read a bit. Why is it speed up here? Inside the chapter one, yeah, so you can actually look at it. Are you able to find? Yeah, uh, let's see, yeah. Is the you can go to a classroom and then the classwork 
Now we go to see the lecture notes, chapter number one. Yeah, so here, go and find this one. So you can actually look at the uh, MSA law question. So this is a uh, hipster law. Yeah, speed up equals to execution time O over the execution time mu, and then equals to this. Yeah, correct, you're right, Chung Yi, you're right. So use this formula and then try to calculate. Okay, done. Okay, let me see. Uh. We'll speed up. Yeah, very good. Uh. So all formula, follow formula. Uh, correct. Okay. Okay, very good. So, yeah, correct. Let's give a bit. Right, pass to Chong Yi. Then we start. Okay. So, good. Very, very good. Yeah, so you can actually look at the uh, answer that is provided by Chung Yi. Uh, yeah, so in case uh, during midterm or final, you are asked to uh, do this type of question, you must be able to do it. You must know the formula. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, we go to the second question. Second question. Uh, not second, third one. Third one. The question is a big one. Huh? Yeah, let's see whether you can finish within 10. And uh, weeks. Yeah. Uh, just I'm starting to do the uh, performance uh, speed up calculation. But now we are going to use. Uh, the top cycles methods. Yeah, top cycles method. Yeah, top cycle methods. So, assuming that you are designing a um, embedded processor for a pacemaker, pacemaker, you know what, right? It's uh, something, let's say, your heart uh, is not working well, then uh, the doctor maybe will. We will try to do a surgery and put the pacemaker to help the heart to uh, beat at the good at, at the good good manner uh, yeah. So that one is the pacemaker. So following results are written by the by the monitoring software analyzing your current design. So for instruction ALU load store branch at divide. All these are the instruction types. Yeah. It add and divide also ALU, right? But here they are split it, yeah. Uh, add divide. So edit is it 100, 35, 20, 55, 45, yeah. So add and divide is not ALU here. Uh, yeah. Separate one now. Uh. Uh, calculate the CPI of your processor on this mix of instructions. Cop cycle per instructions. So let's say uh, some have three, some have seven, some have ten. Uh, so we need to calculate the average uh, of your uh, processor of this mix of. Let me give up. Uh, see, uh, we only copy this uh, because if you don't, you not uh, you 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 don't have the time to write. Yeah, we just copy this one first. You don't have the space to write. No. So I put here. You can actually do the question here. Let's spend like uh, five minutes. Yeah, what is the average cost cycles per instruction? So average up, uh, average up, all this stuff. 
So you get the clock cycle by instruction, the mix of instructions. Let's try it. So we are using the clock cycles method uh, now. This time we're using the M star version to start off. Uh, about the speed up, yeah. And then now we are using the clock cycles. So everyone, please take out paper and do what? Yeah. Uh, 0 0.35 multiply 3 and add, add together, or add 0 0.2 multiply 7.
Det var jeg gerne ikke. Og så ansøgte jeg. Chong Le, eh? is it Chong Le? Yeah, Chong Le. Eh? Okay, thank you for giving the answer. I think it should be correct. Lah. You multiply everything, right? Okay, very good. Now let's give a big round of applause to Chong Le and a star here. Okay, very good. So, Dana, so that means this is the average cost cycles per instruction. Yeah, 5.2. 5.2. So, 5.2 cycles per instruction. Eh? Okay, roughly lah. Huh? Yeah, we have said seven, ten, etc. We get five or two is reasonable. Lah. Okay, very good. Yeah. Okay, good. So now the next one will be, uh, you uh you need to change your computer. Uh, so you have to redesign the computer. So now, uh, you observe that thirty five percent of the ALU operations uh yeah 35 percent over here it's basically pair with a load so that means that we have like subtract load except the add and divide lah, because now they divide these two out already so now they only take one cycle so with the new instruction added branches take five four cycles so branches instead of four cycles take five cycles now you need to calculate compute the cpi for the new version yeah new version so let me maybe I should copy it. Yeah. yeah. So I will put it here. Yeah. I'll put this one here. Okay, you can do. Of course, uh without this one you won't be able to do also, right? So I'll also cut this one. Uh for those who don't know, uh, you can actually use uh window key shift s to cut the, the, the portion, yeah. Uh, the script, uh, screenshot, uh, screenshot of your computer. So now you do this, because now originally it's this one, but now the spare tally with the, yeah. So what happened is, 
instead of uh, 35% of this show, you have to have the 0 0.35. Okay, multiply 0 0.35, right? This portion of the uh, this portion of the instructions is actually is a pair. Maybe subtract with a load followed by a load. So you have this instruction. So uh, you only have this one. So this instruction actually only multiply by one box cycles. Uh, whereas because it has minus a zero point uh, three five, so this portion, this one original one become zero point three five. Uh, become multiply zero point six five right. Uh, this is the new one, and then followed by the load. Load also has become the zero point two. Uh, zero point two minus zero point three five multiply zero point three five right. Something like that. Uh, the rest will be the same, so you have to do the new CPI again. But the branch, yeah, sorry, uh, the branch you have to change to five. They say the new computer will make your branch take five clock cycles. And the new instruction take one cycle. So now let's compute the new CPI. Uh, CPI. Yeah, let's spend a few minutes. Of course, when you divide, you observe that it's no longer un, uh, divided by one. When you divide by zero point nine something, one. Yeah. Because the total total instructions is a total percentage no longer one hundred. Once you yeah.
Yeah, I can see someone's writing with it. Young Lei, is it? Uh, who is writing here? I know who is uh, writing this answer. Is it Young Lei? Okay, very good. Okay, correct. Uh, yeah. Very good. Let's give a big round of applause to Young Lei, right? Okay, very good. I just see a, a human picture there. I don't see who is that. What's more, the icon. Is it Young Lei? Yeah. Okay, very good. Now, uh, next to the last one, before we have a little bit rest, uh, then we can have a little bit rest. So the last one will be, because you are very calculated in CTI, Fox item for instruction. But now, they say that if the clock rate of the old version is 30% faster, the old processor has a better clock rate, 30% faster, which version, old or new, has faster CPU execution time and by how many percent? Uh -huh. Which one has a better CPU execution time? Yeah, because previously we have a clock cycle per instruction here, 5.2 for the 01, 5.2. 01, we have a uh, 5.2. And the new one, you have a uh, what is the number? 4.84. Okay, so this is the clock cycle per instruction. Clock cycle per instruction. So, uh, what is the, let's say you have a clock cycle per instruction. Okay, so what is that? Time, time execution time. So, execution time. Time equals to uh, clock cycle. Okay. Um, execution time, clock cycle per instruction. Clock cycle time, oh, execution time. Uh, wait, wait. How to do it? Uh? So, how do we name it? Execution time, we, we do it per instruction now uh, because we don't have uh, other data. Yeah? Okay, execution time. Per instruction equals to uh, clock cycle per instruction multiplied clock rate, clock rate divided by clock rate, divided by clock rate. Okay, divided by clock rate. Clock rate, let's say four gigahertz. Okay, so you can actually calculate it, and then you let me know uh, what is the execution time, uh, million instruction per second, or what, whatever, uh, whatever method you want to use. Uh. So after that, you tell me what, how many percent. Yeah, you can calculate execution time per instruction. Usually, we count uh, using the mix, uh, MIPS, million instruction per second. Yeah. But never mind this one, you can use any methods you want. Yeah. So because the question never tells us how many instructions, right? Is that? No, right? And they tell us, assume that you, or you want to assume also can, 1 million, uh, million instructions per second. Uh, okay, now we use million instructions per second. Uh, equals to how many, uh, like that. Or, or you want to use other methods also can. Uh. Okay, so we don't use this one. Uh, please uh, calculate uh, whatever methods you want. Assume one million instruction, 
but assume the instruction number is 1 million. So I calculate both. Uh. Let's say it's one instruction, also can, uh, but it's very small. Can, uh, can. 5.2 over. Oh, right, also, you assume one. Uh. If you don't assume very hard for you, you do calculation, you know. Or maybe you use some number. Yeah. 5.2. Now, uh, this one, oh, one, right? Uh, yeah. One, uh, one clock rate. Uh. One clock rate. Uh. Yeah, like that. Uh. Something like that, lah, you calculate it. Just one second, I can skip uh, one giga times, right? So this one only five times two, it's very small. If you, you cannot do this uh, formula, then you just assume it's uh, 1 million, uh, 1 giga, 1, 1 billion instruction, then, uh, then what is the very previous one, new one. Same, uh, at the end, you will still get the same answer. Yeah, so this one, you can just assume the Okay or not? Can or not? <laughs> I think here, here we put 1.3 for our case. If 01 is 30%, then if not, then you have to calculate that one also. This one 1.3. Yeah. And then this one you can, uh, this one is equal to execution time per instruction, equals to 4.84. Or one, yeah, like that. So you calculate and then tell me uh, by execution time, which one faster?
If you have finished, please try your answer eh, to the chat box. Eh. Ah, Chung Yi said, so someone saw the question at Jamboard, which number part, how do we define the remaining log? Page 5. How do we define the remaining log? Part of me were being replaced by new instruction and confused. Oh, Chung Yi for the part number 5. Huh? Ah, page number 5. Because uh, currently, uh, we are... Having the 100% right, you add 35, 20, 15, 15, 10, 5. So now you have to add this, uh, this number, maybe this number, okay? Then add together and then you add this number. So then minus this 0 0.1225 because uh, this portion, uh, this, this portion of the instruction has been reduced. 0 0.2, uh, this portion, uh, 0 0.35 multiply 0 0.35. So it's a 0 0.1225. So this part actually equals to 0 0.1225. That's why. Uh, yeah. Because uh, two instructions combined to one instruction uh, are paired with a lot. So both of them combined become one instruction. Then some instruction has been lost. Yeah, 0 0.1225. That means if you add up all these new percentage, you will get 87.75%. Uh, yeah. Am I answering your question, Chong Yi? Yeah. So uh, if yes, please answer this. Uh, then later we have a little bit press, then we go for next question. Yeah. Thank you. Who, who can do what? This one. Anyone? Yeah, okay, okay, good. I think should be showing me like, you don't see a picture, uh, very small. Showing me like, should be like. Okay, good. So because the CTT new equals to 1.3 CTT. So, uh, yeah, that's why you can see that the overshoot is uh, faster by 6.3%. So this is actually uh, Pyongyang. Is it Pyongyang? I think you see. Uh. Pyongyang, right? Is this Pyongyang? Yeah, see? It's Pyongyang, yeah. okay, okay, very good. So uh, yeah, so let's uh, 
which is answer. This is a new Fox uh, cycle time is actually 1.3 uh, old Fox cycle time. So the old one is faster. So the CPU time here is actually equals to ICO multiply uh, multiply the ICO uh, CCTO multiply CDIO. So you get 5.2. Then the new one, you get 5.521. So that's why, yeah, you get uh, the 62% faster. Yeah, that's how it, work, it works. Uh. Yeah. So this is a formal using the, the methods inside the tutorial. Uh, very good, don't let. Okay. Yeah, we have done a lot. Uh. So as uh, promised, we will have five minutes rest. Uh, this time you only afford to have five minutes rest. Yeah. yeah, because we want to focus on the question. So we we'll come back by 3.27 to give you a little bit rest. Only, you will come back 3.27. Yeah, I will continue to share the new question. 3.27, we'll come back. Yeah. Uh, short rest uh, this time.
Yeah, 327 has come, uh, so 327 has come so early, right? So because today we want to do more questions. So I found that the uh, parcel paper might not, um, uh, it's not, this one we don't focus so much first. Later we will focus. Uh, we come back to the, as I said, uh, we need to do the pseudo code. So we come back to this question. Uh, they only have, I answer your question, uh, this question, because I see this question here. Yeah, I already explained that. Uh, basically, because of this pair, uh, uh, they reduce the total number of instructions. That's why you have to divide by the, yeah, this one, yeah, around 0 0.1225. Yeah, so I hope I have answered your question. But if I don't, you let me know, yeah? So now, let's do this. By zero address, one address, two address, perhaps three address. Make it, make it complete, right? Yeah, so that we repeat, uh, do revision on everything, right? Three address. Uh, then later we do the interaction first. Uh, let's do this. Yes. Uh, X equals to 2Y plus J. So after you saw the Y, uh, X, after that you do this. Yeah, that means you have to store two places. Uh. Yeah, let's do this question. Uh, together, uh, that means uh, both of them actually have to do uh, instruction for both of them. Let's do this. Everyone can try to do this. Zero, one, two, three, zero is the stack.
for zero it has to push um, yeah push y multiply to push z then add after that pop x ah, something like that yeah it should be a very interesting program writing uh, activities that you like programming Yeah, Jing Wen. Yeah, please put your answer. Thank you. Okay. Push two, push one, multiply, push check, and pop X. Yeah, correct. Push X, push P, push three, multiply, and pop A. Okay, correct. Very good. Yeah, very good. Just get there, of course, you want to do it. Good. Uh, the other can try. Uh, anyone also can do it. No problem. If you want to do it again, it's okay. Just see one more question uh, at the back. Uh, if you can see it. Uh. That one is a very challenging question. Uh. Extra question number two later. Uh, later. After this, we will do that. Uh.
Doctor Ho. Oh, yes. Hey. Um, for the code, right? If we did yeah. the code, ah, yes. For the code, like uh, for the code that Jingwen, right? If we exclude the pop X and push X, will the result be the same? Uh, yeah, but because we have the X here, X is also another output. Yeah, so we must stop. Okay, yes. understood. Yeah, correct. Yeah, very good question, I think. Because uh, we have two results. Uh, yeah, if you don't pop, then X will assist this one. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you can also give the answer for this one uh, and this and this. Actually, I have given you another answer uh, question. Uh, if we have time, we can do today. If not, then we can do some work. Uh. Uh, who did this? Uh, I know the one address. Jing, Jing okay, good. Thank you. So let us check. Uh, Lot Y. This accumulator. So your your brain must have the accumulator. Lot Y multiply two store T. Store T. Yeah. Lot Y multiply two store T. Lot Z. You can directly add P or add Z also can uh, if you don't want to uh, have extra, yeah. It's still okay one. Look why multiply to Z. Yeah, still same, right? Yeah, but your answer is correct. Uh. Then store Z. Okay, X is okay, good. And then log B multiply three. Then you can directly add, add, add X. Then we'll be X, yeah, can be done like this. Then store A. Okay, answer is correct, uh, but you can actually make it shorter. Uh. Okay, very good. Okay, very good. Thank you, Jingwen. Okay, very good. Okay, thank you. So, two addresses and three addresses. Don't let it can push X and push X all. Okay, already answer yeah, don't let. Yeah. Because the X is also an output. That's why uh, we have to pop. Yeah, with no choice. Uh.
Yeah, who has already finished? Can you put your answer here to be shy? Uh, for your information, I have already created another question for you. Uh. Write Intel x 6 instructions, assembly language, to ask a user, ask a user to key in a day in a week. Day in a week, okay. For example, Monday is one, Sunday is seven. Then display whether it is a weekday or weekend. Yeah, they'll say weekday, weekend. Yeah. So it's a good exercise to do. I think you need an extra instruction that you have to compare a jump greeter or what? Uh, yeah, like that. Lah. Jump greeter that, yeah. G greeter equal JGE. Yeah. So you can actually search. Yeah. yeah, search the JGE. How to search up? Uh, Intel SMD language. Jump greeter that equal. Uh, then you can search a bit, uh, to see which instruction actually uh, is a uh, conditioner, jump conditioner. Okay. See? Yeah, we have uh, assembly language, so you can actually go and see. And conditioner means you just jump. Uh. We have to compare, first compare like this, then jump equal. Yeah, but besides equal, you also can jump quicker than uh, uh, quicker or equal. Can jump not equal, jump greater, jump not less, uh, jump greater, jump less. Yeah, so this instruction can actually uh, help you to do this. Uh, let's say, for example, you compare AL, jump equal, compare AL, BH, jump equal, uh, like that. Uh, or example, jump greater than greater. Yeah, if too much, then you jump to exit. Uh, whatever so you can actually yeah, you can see all my all, all the example in the in the website actually is is uh 16 bit uh, assembly language because once you go move to 32 bits uh, you are you no longer can get access to all this function uh. yeah windows has already blocked uh. so we still go back to 16 bit in case uh, you need to do it i uh, still can use some function from the microprocessor so we come back, see whether we have time, you can try out. Okay, very good. So this one, I don't know who do it. Who do this? Uh? Yeah, man, no? Who do this? Yeah, multiply. Uh, yeah, Jingwen also. Okay, okay, very good. Yeah, thank you. So move R not Y. Okay, multiply R not 2. Good. Add R not Z. Uh, yeah, then move R not to X. Okay, good. So move R not B, multiply three, and R not X, move A. Okay, very good. Let's give a big round of applause to Jing one also. Okay, very good. Okay, you can now try the three addresses. Then we go to the assembly exercise. Then we can write, try to write your assembly language. Yeah. Yeah, also after. Uh, yeah, already done. Uh. So the last one, let's say also we can write. Okay, good. Multiply are not two y and x are not z. Okay, good. Then multiply are not three b and a are not x. Okay, very good. Let's see if we're to uh, the French. Okay, very good. So thank you. Uh, since you still have 10 minutes, uh, yeah. so you can actually try out this. Uh, if you have no question on this one, then uh, please try out the last exercise for today. For Friday, uh, we, will, we will do other revisions. Yeah, thank you. Please try this out. Uh. It's a very nice uh, exercise. I, I believe we need to uh, make it to homework like if you cannot finish. But you can start now. And then on Friday, we can discuss.
Okay, first then jump equal jump less than um, yeah like that. We have time. We can also do some uh, testing on the dot box. Yeah, very good. Huh? Everyone can do this. Uh... So this starts to do revision. Yeah, we do all the exercises, and also they might have some very minimum theory lah. So you start a bit, study a bit. From the code that I've given to you on the calculator, then you can actually plug some code outside and then try to write. Yeah, okay. Yeah, any question? So on Friday, we can do a little bit on the cut lining. We have done pseudo code and then now we are doing the instruction. We have already previously practiced the instruction code already, the assembly language already. Now I just want you to uh, try to practice that. Yeah, I will test you, definitely test you on assembly language and pseudo code. Uh, yeah. Because of the performance. And then pipelining, if Friday we can do a little bit exercise. Okay, let me make sure you know what is a structural error. This error. And also, the structure of a pipeline, how to draw a pipeline diagram. Anyone that's already finished this 
Questions? In case you finish, you just paste it here. Yeah, not that I'd like you to do your homework. Uh, as a homework. Uh. Yeah. But it's a very good exercise to do. Uh. So on Friday only, we will do the revision on uh, part line. Yeah. So part lining. Then from there, only uh, next Tuesday, we can have our test. Uh. Yeah. Uh, basically, we will test on performance, like uh, those things, two, two methods. And then we will test on the assembly language and pseudocode, and also the pipelining, what type of error, structural error, uh, all those stuff. Yeah. You can go and read a bit. Uh. Then Friday only, I give you some questions to try. Anyone done? Or you need to do, uh, I think I'd like you to do uh, as homework. Uh, your thing, uh. Or your thing is currently paste your, pasting your answer, is it? So uh, I know you later, you also have some practical. So I, I want to release you a bit uh, early, a few minutes earlier. So if you have no question, then you are allowed to leave. If question, you can stay. Yeah? So any question you can ask me, yeah? you can turn on your mic and ask me.